Hi everybody, welcome to Hunting in South Dakota with Daryl. We are going to take you to Big Stone Lake, which is located in Northeast South Dakota and is some 24 miles long. We will be watching Dave Raw's crew seine the lake for rough fish. They have already made some poles earlier in the week and have had very good results. You will get to see just how the operation works and get to see just what's in these lakes. We will get to see what kind of rough fish swim in Northeast South Dakota lakes. Not only will you see rough fish, but a lot of game fish as well. Stay tuned for our show's eighth episode of season two on Hunting in South Dakota with Daryl, Saning Fish on Big Stone Lake. Beautiful day to do it, though. It's 14 guys. 14. Yeah. Dave Ross, the owner of the outfit. Dave Ross, the fish. Him and Terry Miller. Terry Miller's got the contract on Big Stone this year. It goes. Well, I'm sure it probably was. Jack Raw, now David, the boys. It's kind of a dying art. Yeah. You can take sheephead, silver bass, suckers, carp, buffalo. You get many buffalo? There's a, quite a few in here. Yeah. Game fish, I'll go back in. Do you, do you get a lot of visits from game fishing parks out here? Or? Yeah, Minnesota's out here every day. With oh, they the are? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a border lake, right? Yeah. yeah. Minnesota's got the contract, right. so they come out and they do their thing, watch yeah. us. Well, who do they Count. get the contract from? The state or what? Yeah, from the state. Okay. Good smile room. for the camera there, Brian. <laughs> Pretty smile, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian? Yeah, that's you, Brian. You know, Kenny Hunter? Chris. They go to St. Church, I go, and we do a lot of things together. Yeah. A lot of fun together. Well, he yeah. ain't talked to you going on a cruise yet? I know he hasn't. <laughs> I don't think I wanted to go on that boat. <laughs> Me neither. Any cruise that I'm going to do is in Compesca or Big Stone. People want to be in here. Fred, you're probably about, what, 10 foot, 12 foot? Probably. We tried to land in, like, 6, 7. Yeah. yeah. So, so you guys can get you get in the water, don't yeah, you? Bert and, yeah, Bert and Bob get in the water and they walk the lead line down. Get in the water? Yeah, yeah they, they put, put waders, waders on. Waders put waders on. on and then there's a saddle that they put their arms on to hold them up a little bit and then they just walk oh, yeah, on that lead line. A lot of neat stuff. You might even catch people falling in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Some people not just me. stick their feet right in the hole. <laughs> 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 And my first year, and they told me to hold on to the corpse, don't let go, and we had so much fish. <laughs> they pulled me right in, and Frank grabbed me by the suspenders and pulled me right out. That's when they're young and dumb. Yeah, young and dumb, yeah, my first year. First timers. Yeah. First timers. Don't let, don't let go of them. Well, if it's 20 below, that wouldn't be much fun. No. <laughs> but luckily, I didn't get wet at all, surprise. Oh, water's okay. dry. The water's dry up here. Yeah, is it? Yeah, water's dry. <laughs> I seen a guy going up to here this year, and he didn't get wet. He yeah. was dry. Yeah. I don't know how, but he was dry. At least he yeah. said he was dry. Yeah. Do, do you guys get wet every day? Do you get wet? Yeah, this don't Kinda. repel everything. Oh, okay. God, that must be cold. Sweat. Sweat, you sweat quite a bit. Oh, okay. It's a lot warmer out here than a guy thinks. Yeah. There's a picture of the boss coming there. He's always the last one on the lake. <laughs> you buy them lottery tickets in California? Flew out there yesterday. Good. Then we got a chance. <laughs> Yeah. 
recording. You know they're on the reach, I did. Okay, I didn't know that. Contract from both states or just well, they take turns. They Next take year will be a South Dakota contract on this oh, one. Over here. And South Dakota's got the one on drivers this year. And you got to give the state some revenue back for yep. fishing. They want to get their revenue. That's <laughs> what so makes the world go around. That's right. Moving it up. We are on our way to the first step of the seining process. Oh, he's already starting to drill. <laughs> Before that, this crew must plan where this process will commence. Then, a hole must be drilled to start the net. This net is around 3,200 feet long and will cover an area that extends over half a mile long. When they cut a hole in the ice to start the net, they must get rid of the big chunks of ice that they cut by sliding them underneath the ice covering the lake. Sometimes this is easier said than done. This particular block of ice is about 4 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 3 feet thick. Not an easy thing to move around. Now what happens if one of these large steel poles that these workers use to chip away at the ice fall through the ice? Well, owner Dave Ross says if the worker is new, they have to jump right into the lake and retrieve it. Although he did say it with a note of levity, I would not want to drop one of these poles into the ice on my first day. And by the way, we did not see any of these poles go into the lake on this particular day. Frank, I had a duck buy me a soda yesterday. How can a duck afford a soda? Well, he just put it on his bill. <laughs> the next step involves submerging two submarines that will lead the way for the net. Some new submarines. We used to use boards. Okay. Now they use a submarine. Oh, submarine goes under the water. Yep, yep. You can see the light. There's a light on it, and there's two clickers on it. You can hear it. I think we should just get Mike in his scuba gear and stuff in this bag. <laughs> you have enough air for about eight hours in there. That's the cameraman's job. <laughs> Dry suit. <laughs> two tanks in case we get hung up on a tree. Uh, you got more well, than he can go out and get it done hung. Two tanks don't last long, I'll tell you what. That's cold. Poking out with Especially when you get breathing hard and heavy under there. That happens too, man. Dave tied himself to a car he was pulling out. A bit or two. Tied himself to the car in the water. He had a knife on him. He freaked out. Oh. And tied himself. Panicking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as you panic, man, your air just goes to nothing. Yeah. yeah. Suck that right up, man. 45 minutes to about 15. Yeah, the there you go. There you got it. Does net ever get tangled? Your hand in front of your oh, yeah. Does it really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like no. You'd have to go back and get another battery. Well, you get, get tangled. Oh, okay. Now, that, hour, hour and a half, get the net in, get set up. And when we catch 130, 40,000 pounds like we have the last two poles, it takes all day to sort. 
Big storm been pretty good for you. Caught a lot of fish the last few pulls. Right at. Can you tell? Is there many game fish in there? There's been quite a few. A lot of crappie this year. A lot of crappie. A lot of crappie. Walleyes. Quite a few, but yeah. I've seen more before on poles okay. on big stump. Okay. Are they pretty good at avoiding the nets or no? No. No. Really You're nothing can get, get around it. <laughs> oh, okay. You're gonna get the fish. When it goes in, yeah, one end's on the ground, one end's on the ice. The only thing they can do is try to swim out. But on this lake we catch fish every year that we see them every year. There's catfish that we see every year. Really? Yeah. Same ones, huh? Yeah. Because they're so spotted, you know, they're, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, like Holstein characteristics. <laughs> oh, okay. This is uh, big, big ones? Big catfish? Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's like this. Body oh, up my long. God. I hope we see something there. Yeah, I do too. We'll see. We'll see some fish for sure. Okay. Oh, it does. place where the fish will be brought in. To help me explain this process, I want you to first imagine a big teardrop. Now if you turn the teardrop upside down, the top of it is where the net is dropped. Then the subs lead the net around the body of the teardrop and finally to a point at the bottom of the teardrop, that's where the big hole is made. The net will be collected there after seining this huge area. The bag that they mention is at the end of this net. That's where most of the fish are collected. Hopefully for this crew, lots of them. Cutting the big hole to retrieve the fish is an effort, requiring lots of hands and tasks. And it's not an easy job, even though these guys make it look pretty simple.
Then the final preparations for the incoming net. Holes must also be made to store the fish overnight before loading them on a truck the next day. The holes must continuously be cleared of all ice chunks. A sorting table must be set up to sort out the different types of fish and everyone has a job to do and knows exactly how to do it. We got okay. this rope here and we'll attach it to both ends and we'll okay. pull them both up and then once they get it up so far then they'll bring the peg back up here and then that reels them up right there behind you. Takes all the physical part out of it. Good. That would be pretty heavy. Yes. Well, I feel for them how they had to do it back in the old days. Oh my god, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Made some men, that's for sure. Oh man, manpower. Yep. Unbelievable. So we're about 50 yards away from pay dirt, huh? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It takes a little bit to get it all up in. Oh, okay. Every once in a while, too, we might have a stick or, some, or oh. a log in there. Oh. You'll know right away because one or the other, they'll be way up out of the water. Now, does somebody get in the water here? Or? Yep, there'll be two people, one on each side. Oh my God. They're too deep here, evidently. No, uh, you can actually see the bottom. Oh, you, oh, you can. can? Yeah. So how did they know that before? I guess they do depth finders. Yeah, oh, okay. they've, they've been here oh, okay. for years. They, okay. they, know. Yeah. they know exactly what they're doing. Yep. <laughs> Big bullhead, huh? As the net slowly comes in, branches and huge limbs of trees threaten to tear or rip the net. A costly endeavor to say the least. Any refuse or tree branch that is collected by the nets must be piled up and later removed by this crew. The anticipation of the net particularly seeing the bag at the end of the net, can be gut-wrenching. There is nothing easy or inexpensive about this process of seining fish. Sometimes you're working in bitter cold temperatures that are made much colder by the unblocked winds on the lake. 
the cold water spraying on you. You will slip and slide on the ice, being cautious not to slip too hard by the holes in the ice. The time spent planning where exactly to same. The multiple tractors that are needed for almost every part of the process. The very large and expensive and vulnerable net. The wages to be paid. The gas to run the equipment. The list goes on and on. And it will only be paid for if there are literally thousands of pounds of fish in that bag. Well, what do they have today? We'll know in a minute. Deep breath. Here we go. Don't miss the conclusion of Saining Fish on Bakestone, where you'll get to see the results of this long day on the ice. You'll also learn a little about the fish that they keep and what happens to them. It's been an exciting ride so far along with these fishermen, and you won't want to miss what's in store for next week. Thanks for joining us again today. I'm Kurt Johnson from both Daryl and myself. We'll see you next time on Hunting in South Dakota with Daryl. Thank you.